Good evening, everybody, and thank you for coming out. We have a lot of celebrations this evening, so it's nice to see you all here. We're going to start this evening um, with our budget presentations, and we're going to allow, uh, no, we're going to allow Mr. Duran from the library to go first. Okay. Um, our budget this year, we're very happy that we were under the cap. We're at uh, 1.3 percent, which is about forty-five thousand dollars. We have a small budget. Um, we are negotiating with the union this year, so we're not sure how accurate our labor line will be. But um, you know, we're, you don't want to give away your hand. Um, we reduce the number of lines this year to get it under the cap. And um, we were successful. Um, we tried to predict the inflation increase for our utilities because they have been going up in gas and electric and stuff. Um, we uh, decreased certain items like the number of databases that we have and uh, things like C CDs and DVDs, because so many people now are streaming, and so we don't need the, the physical media. And uh, that's about it. We're we're ending up with four million five hundred fifty-two five hundred twenty-four dollars uh, to be raised by taxes this year. And that's it. Does anybody in the audience have any questions for Mr. Duran in regards to the library budget? If you're in the virtual audience, um, feel free to just raise your hand if you have a question for Mr. Duran. Okay, so moving right along, we're going to go to Mr. Press, who's going to present the school district budget for this year. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh. Um, you go back? I don't know if that. I did that. You did. Yeah. <clears throat> Again, fourth time is the charm, I guess. Uh, for the course of our budget presentations. Yeah, good yeah. math. Yeah, uh, <laughs> two in March, one in April, and this fourth one. Uh, this is the, the budget hearing is required uh, by law for us to present the budget uh, within two weeks of the actual budget vote, which is coming up. Uh, so this is going to be a, a summary. There's a lot of information on the website this is more for the audience that you guys know this. Uh, all the previous presentations are available on the website, as well as a host of other information, and there's going to be more going up as well. So, get into it. Our proposed budget, um, just about $71.4 million. It's about a $2.5 million budget to budget increase, a little bit more than the libraries, a little, um, which is 3.61% uh, spending increase. Uh, the budget is supported by a 2.14% tax levy increase, which is our district's tax cap. Uh, so we are within the district's tax cap, which means we only need a majority of voters to support the budget in order for it to pass. And it's the 11th year in a row that we are presenting a budget that is within the tax cap, which is the entire um, lifespan of the tax cap. So every year we get within the tax cap. Uh, I just wanted to point out, um, and I pointed this out before, 
we went out with a 0% levy for the 2021 school year. Uh, and so over the three years leading into next year's budget, uh, the average increase in, in the tax levy is less than one and a half percent. Less than what? I'm sorry? Less than one and a half percent. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, just again, to point out some of the main challenges going into next year, uh, our retirement system contributions, these are mandated by the state. Uh, so there are increases. It's largely driven by the increase in the teacher retirement system contribution. So we've got a two hundred eighty-five thousand dollars budgeted increase there. Uh, medical insurance premiums have spiked for calendar year twenty twenty-two. On average, we're up about thirteen percent for our active employees in terms of the premiums. Uh, we budgeted a fairly sizable increase going into twenty-three twenty-four. Uh, I'm sorry, in calendar year twenty twenty-three, uh, which is unknown point in time, so we've got almost $700,000 budget there for those increases. And then coming my perennial thrown in my side, transportation, um, which has been going up uh, in uh, in the range of a million dollars or more every year for the last three years. Um, we have been, Ms. Gandolfo and I have been taking uh, a whole lot of steps and talking to a whole lot of people trying to find ways where we can find efficiencies and lower costs. Um, we hope that we are going to be successful. We've got a new consultant for our quadrant bids. Um, I actually on Friday got to the ear of the executive director of the state organization for school business officials uh, and said, we're having a problem down here. I was in a room with business officials from all across the island, and they were all nodding their heads, even the, the folks from Suffolk. So um, it's not just us. We're all seeing increases. We just happen to see it a lot more because of, uh, we have a lot more out of district transportation than all right, our proposed budget presenting in three parts. This we are required to do this by law, so we present the budget parts: the administrative, the program, and the capital components. Uh, administrative does not mean administration uh, necessarily. Um, what the, the proposed, the expenses that go into these um, three parts are dictated by the law as well. So administrative includes administration, but it's not exclusively administration. Uh, program component is the educational program that is the bulk of the expense uh, for the district, which is what we expect for a school district. And capital is our building and grounds. Uh, the percentage allocations here are pretty much on par with what they were the previous year. Uh, and for those who like a visual representation, a nice pretty chart. For, uh, same information, just presented a little differently. Budget vote is May 17th. Uh, if the budget does not pass on the 17th, we get another shot in June to present another budget. If uh, both budgets do not pass, we go to what's called a contingency budget, in which case the tax levy increase goes to zero. Uh, in that event, we would have to reduce the budget by about a million dollars, which is the increase in the tax levy going into next year. Um, if that does happen, there will be public conversations. The board would have to decide and approve and adopt another but any questions on any of this so far? All right. So all of these, the budgets that we're presenting, because we've been presenting, uh, are really in support of our students to allow our students to grow, to thrive, and, and succeed. Uh, and so, to that end, our students are being recognized for their accomplishments across a, a, a broader range uh, of areas: academic, athletic, arts music, uh, STEM, uh, and this is all because of the budgets that we, that the community and that the board has adopted over the years to allow us to uh, create programs, to allow them to succeed while they're here and to become successful after they leave here. We have a couple of slides of some of the recognition that our students have been uh, receiving uh, beyond the school district, a lot of statewide and national uh, recognition. I think we just had Freeman, uh, I think it was you. We have a student who is ranked number one in the state. She was just yeah. right there. That's the coach. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the coach right. Right. one on a Gary Air girl. Yeah, so um, that's not on here. I apologize for that. So uh, kids are too. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, a couple of slides of the achievements that we can see. In terms of the more budget information, if you don't get enough from these presentations or from the website, uh, <laughs> the educator will be coming home, be mailed to every 
a home within the all uh, the West Texas School District. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. That should be going out short. And that's it. Just remember the vote is May 17th, uh, 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. in our uh, newly renovated gym. I was just over there this morning. It looks incredible. Um, if you haven't seen it, I think you're going to be impressed. Uh, just come and vote uh, and don't, don't hang around necessarily to affect a lot of people, but um, it's great. It looks great. Um, and that is it. So at this point, if you have any questions, I'm going to take any questions from the board. Okay, so at this time, before Mr. Press sits down, I'm just going to allow questions from the audience if they have them um, about the budget presentation only. So if anybody in the audience here has a question, and if you're virtual, please raise your hand <laughs> virtually, and I will call on you. Is that you moving the mouse? Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm like, you got to stop. There's one hand, and it just moves around. Okay. So with that, we're going to say thank you to Mr. Press. Well, for those of us that have now heard that for the fourth or fifth time, <laughs> um, I hope you found it wonderful, as it always is. Miss Brian is not asleep, so I did a good job. <laughs> I did a good job. Did not put her to sleep. I think I'm going to let Ray do it next time. It was very quick. When he did it. <laughs> I'll send you my <laughs> Um, Okay, so moving forward, I need a motion to move dockets 1-368 through 1-372. So moved. Uh, um, any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. <clears throat> motion passes. Um, we're going to move on to board, uh, reports of committees. We have no Board of Education report this evening. Um, well, PTA, PTSA, and SEPTA. I did see Ms. Thomas in the audience uh, virtually. If you, Michelle, want to unmute yourself and uh, give your PTA report. I think Mr. Black is trying to. There you go. Hello. Can you hear me? I can. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> um, so. PTA has a lot going on right now, so here we go. Um, we have a lot of a lot of fundraisers upcoming right now, including our Cinco de Mayo themed social on um, May 5th at Stewart Manor Country Club. We thank everyone that purchased tickets and donated to our raffles, and we look forward to a fun night. Um, we also have our spring plant sale going on. Um, the flyer was sent home, so please return your order form with payment by May 13th, and the pickup date is May 20th. Um, we also have our Yankee uh, game fundraiser. We, we brought that back this year. Um, that's going to be on June 3rd, and the flyers will be going home soon, um, probably sometime this week. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we have the sixth grade fund day committee. They'll be fundraising at George Washington's spring concert. So please come ready to support them. Um, we're still looking to fill our board for next year. So if anyone has ever even given it a piece of a thought, please contact me and we can talk and hopefully get you to give it even more thought. <laughs> we, we do need more um people to fill up the positions that we have so um yeah you can always shoot me an email or um give me a call um pta ptsa and septa will be hosting the candidates forum next week um that's may 10th i believe that is tuesday may 10th at 7 30 in the high school cafeteria um so we're asking everybody to come out with their questions ready to learn about the candidates for um for the Board of Education, um, the PTA, PTSA, and SEPTA also has our installation dinner coming up. So um, that'll be June 1st at Verdi's. And the PTA's next meeting and final meeting is May 23rd at 7.30. And this time it's going to be at Chestnut, not George Washington, because we're having it right after the new parent orientation. And that's it. Thank you, Ms. Thomas. Um, 
Mrs. Andre, since you're in the audience, are you giving your report or Mrs. Merle, are you giving your report? Well, she's making a face, so I guess Mrs. Andre is going to do it. <laughs> I'm doing it. Uh, good evening, Kathy Andre, <clears throat> co president of PTSA. Uh, today, the West Hampton PTSA board and parent members were able to show our appreciation at the middle school, high school, and district offices by providing breakfast to the staff at all three buildings. Thank you to everyone who donated and to our committee chairs for your organization. And thank you to all of our staff for everything you do for our children. Our next meeting is on May 16th. If you wish to be on our board, please, 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 um, please contact us by May 10th. Our email address, whptsa at aol.com. Somebody will definitely get back to you. Um, but we really do need um, board members. We have some of the retiring. <coughs> um, our eighth grade dance committee is having a fundraiser at Governor's on Sunday, May 15th. Tickets are on sale now. Again, whptsa at aol.com um, if you would like tickets or information. And um, as Michelle said, our joint ventures, um, we're having a joint PTA, PTSA, Yankees game on June 3rd. Tickets are on sale. All are welcome, especially our esteemed board members when they would want to come and support us. I'm sorry, yeah, you, said all, it was, you said it was a Met game? A Met game. Yeah. 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 Well, I want to make money. I, I want people to back together. I know. Um, <laughs> also, our installation dinner is coming up to install all of our wonderful new board members that I'm sure we're going to get for PTA, PTSA, and SEPTA. And I believe that is it. Happy spring. We hope everyone's enjoying the weather. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I will just comment on what Ms. Thomas and what uh, Mrs. Andre said. I know that both PTA and PTSA have been um, struggling for board members of late. And uh, I know I sat on the PTA board and as did um, Mrs. Shinsato. And truly it is a wonderful time to learn about what's going on in your children's school and help and be a participant. Um, there's a couple other parents in the audience that were part of the PTAs. So take the opportunity. If you have a little bit of time to offer, it's really not as much of a of a load as you think you're taking on, just make the phone call, speak to one of the PTA presidents or PTSA presidents, and they'll <clears throat> advise you what's involved. Um, all the information to reach them is also on the back of the school calendar if you need. Um, that being said, I'm going to move on to the other Miss Andre, our student <laughs> representative for the evening, Katie. Hello, I'm Catherine Andre. I'm the president of Student Council. On May 17th, the Leadership Club will be going on a 5.6 mile hike on the Greenbelt Trail led by Mr. Silverman. Students will have the opportunity to explore uh, the natural environment while participating in the trail cleanup activity. Um, this month, members of Art Honor Society will be taking part in the high school's annual STEAM night. Students are currently in process of developing and practicing activities that best demonstrate the A in STEAM. Um, an update on the high school athletics as of this morning. The girls varsity lacrosse team has a record of six and one. The boys varsity tennis team has a record of seven and one. And the softball team had a record of ten and oh, but not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. They were robbed. The boys and girls. <laughs> the boys and girls track teams are building on the success of the winter season. Both teams have winning records and several students are currently ranked at the state level. It is anticipated that many of that, uh, many of our student athletes will receive all county recognition and will qualify for the New York State Championship in June. Um, we are happy to announce that we will be having an in-person athletic awards dinner this year. The girls' dinner is on June 8th and the boys' dinner is on June 9th. Both dinners will be at the Plaid Oasis restaurant in Franklin Square. Um, it's $45 in cash per person and it's due by May 18th. Thank you very much. Mr. Mistretta, I know you're out there. I'll send my cash. I for keep forgetting. Yeah. Oh, and flag football mention, game tomorrow. Yeah, and you also forgot to mention first ever girls flag Oh, and win. first win Thursday. <laughs> Very proud of that group of girls taking on a lot of teams that have community teams that are have been playing for a long time. And these girls are, are truly playing their heart out. Make sure to come to our senior night, May 10th. I mean, we have some pretty awesome seniors. <laughs> <laughs> just saying. Or maybe just like 
One. We have at least one. At least one. <laughs> and that's what matters. Um, okay, so are you doing No. I'm skipping him. <laughs> Just a second. Um, so we reached the first period for district residents, Island Park residents, and or employees of the district to address the board. This individual will be limited to three minutes of non-confidential agenda items with an overall maximum of 20 minutes for this part of the meeting if needed. So at this time, if you're in this, I was going to say studio audience, if you're in the <laughs> audience here, please raise your hand. If you're in the virtual audience, please raise your hand and I will ask you to unmute and um, ask your question. So. Oh, Mrs. Hafner, since I can hear you, do you want to go? Sure. Thank you. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Happy Mother's Great. Day. Thank you. Same to you. Um, I, I'm hoping that we, we as a district took a look at the um, Growing Your Own article that was in Sunday's Newsday about um, some, I think there were three districts on Long Island that had a grow your own clubs for secondary students in order to promote them going into education. Is this something that we would consider? I know that there is a grant to start this club um, and it looked like a wonderful program. Uh, we're going to explore all options as we had talked about early in the year with the new secondary school starting in July. We want to create various pathways. Um, and there's different ways of approaching it. I, I personally like the club approach, but it's not going to be my decision. It'll be a decision of many people. I love the Baldwin approach, but that's a different. Uh, that costs a lot more money, it's a, and we that's not something I think a district of our size can continually promote with one profession per se. And I want to open up multiple opportunities for multiple students. So probably look at it through the club route and uh, in various other means. Yes, I believe it was Long Beach and Brentwood that did the club route. Yes, um, Baldwin had um, not only a grant from NYSET, but they got an, um, an additional grant from another organization. Okay, um, did you have, a, do you have another question before I ask if somebody? Nope, I'm good, thanks. Oh. Just wanted to be curious because I know there is a teacher shortage and it would be wonderful to get our own students that graduated from our high school to consider going into education. So, thank you very much. Do thank we have you. any questions from the audience here or anybody else from the virtual audience? If you have a question in the virtual audience, please raise your hand and I'll call on you. <clears throat> Mrs. Hafner, oh, thank you. Can you just put your hand down um, so that if you have a question at the next session, I'll know that you're, thank you. Um, okay, so we're gonna move on. I need a motion to move dockets 1-373. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. So uh, this evening, and unfortunately she cannot be here because she's finishing up the second of three plays she's currently conducting, but I do just want to uh, introduce her name. Uh, we have a new director of fine performing and culinary arts, and her name is Ms. Layla Sales. She's coming from the Lawrence School District, and uh, we are looking forward to working with her. She begins on July 1st. So congratulations to Layla. We wish her all the best. We call it 0.5. <laughs> uh, I need a motion to move one dash one dash three seven three point five to um to one dash three seven four. So moved. 
Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Oh, all right, hold on. No, no, uh, fine. I also need a motion to move dockets 1 375 through 1 376. So moved. Second. <laughs> Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Mr. Raymond. I just do want to mention one thing. It's not in the superintendent report, but I just do want to, on behalf of the entire staff in the district, I want to thank all PTA, PTSA, and SEPTA for the staff appreciation spread they put out today. It was wonderful. Or sure some of us will be enjoying it again tomorrow. So thank you for that. So we have a number of things here, and this is why uh, the room was packed, uh, besides for Mr. Press's icing. Thank you. Uh, when one door closes, another opens. Sometimes you hear a kaboom. Who entered the room? Well, I was Mr. Bronski Mesidor. As he uh, eagerly jumped at the opportunity to take on a different role in our new secondary school. Sometimes it's not just about being on the bus. And these days, the buses are not cheap. Right, Mr. Bronski? <laughs> right but being on the right seat on the bus. Baranzi's big personality, humility, and willingness to learn will make him a valuable member of the secondary school administration. This, in turn, opened the door for another member of our team to find a new, and what I believe, uh, maybe a most comfortable seat on the RAM bus. Mr. Murray will be our new K-12 Director of Humanity. With his English background and strong understanding of literacy, Sean will be providing worthy guidance as we develop a new framework for learning 7-12. Congratulations to both of you and we look forward to continuing on. Not that that wasn't fun, but here's for the real fun. Um, we have uh, 10 uh, tenure announcements this evening, which in the district our size is a lot, and that's very meaningful. Which means you guys, men and women, have done wonderful work here in our district. And I think the theme, if I had to pick a phrase for these 10 people, um, the love of children, love of students. Um, we're going to start with Miss Joanne Capolino. If you could just stand so everyone could recognize you. Capolino has served as a TA at the high school in George Washington. She holds degrees in elementary ed and reading. Over the past two years at George Washington, she has worked in two fourth grade classes supporting students in ICT study, ICT centers. When visiting classrooms, you can see Ms. Capolino engaged in small group instruction, which is one of our uh, initiatives. And um, she's reteaching concepts and connecting with students, um, as well as enriching them and pushing them further. She regularly assists students in developing organizational skills and ensures that they are ready to begin their day. She's being recommended for tenure by Ms. Karras, Ms. Nadi, and me. Congratulate you. Thank you I just like to point out, instead of having you come down and take your picture, I already did that. So, you know, person to my right, your left, you know, she might have been a little fresh for me before, but I already took care of all that. Uh, next up, Miss Lisa Girolamo. We're going to make Girolamo. you get up and take a picture together anyway. So, whatever. Can you please you stand. Thank you. Girolamo began her teacher's uh, career at Chestnut Street four years ago, and she has been at Cornwall Avenue for the past three. She's presently assigned to Miss Moore's class. Where she supports this? No, Sarah. I mean Miss Sarrow's class. I do apologize. I was in there. Sorry, sorry, Miss Sarrow. I apologize. Um, she works with Miss Sarrow to ensure that she supports the individual students, uh, both in the small and full group setting. I had the opportunity to be in that room not too long ago, and I have to say it, it's fabulous to watch them uh, progress. They understand their routines. They understand where to go. They. Uh, Mr. Alamo and the entire staff in there really try to promote autonomy and, um, you know, they're, they're some of our little learners, as I like to call them, but they are truly growing more independent every day. Um, due to some of the needs of the students in the class, Mr. Alamo has been trained in what we call CPI and has gained the knowledge of applied behavioral analysis methodologies. She's definitely a kind and caring professional and is being recommended for tenure by Ms. Karras, Ms. Nito, and me. Congratulations. The of the evening, Ms. Lewis. 
Who is here tonight with Ms. Sarone, she works with on a daily basis. Ms. Lewis is a teaching assistant, uh, has been a teaching assistant at Cornwall Avenue and now at the middle school. Um, presently working with Ms. Sarone in the 8-1 program. And um, she has immersed herself in the curriculum and is a great support to the students and staff. The students she worked with, the students she works with have a high degree of need, both <laughs> academically and behaviorally. And she is there all the time to collaborate in the classroom to ensure that all the students' needs are met. She employs a, employs a wide variety of instructional strategies and always runs small groups and supports whole group instruction. She's been recommended this evening for tenure by Ms. Karras, Mr. Murray. Teaching staff, we're going to start with a former comment. I don't know what the comments are. That's the pixel crew. You know, we have to stay together. Uh, Mr. Ronnie Bauer was hired in the fall of 2018 to teach middle school science. Uh, according to Mr. Murray, Mr. Kanjemi, he immediately became a team player. He's a baseball guy, again, from Hicksville. Um, to his colleagues, always offering support and suggestions as they develop their lessons. I do know, uh, you know, he might not know I know this, but during the uh, COVID pandemic at the beginning when, you know, we were trying to adjust to a new reality, a new world, Mr. Barrow was one of the uh, people at the forefront with technology, helping support the staff, not just the students, to ensure that um, we can get up and running. So it's uh, wonderful to watch and really hear about uh, some of the work that he did there. Um, I'm not going to read the rest of that because that's all true. But the other day I was in this classroom. And um, if you know eighth period in middle school or ninth period in middle school, it can be a little uh, fun. Yeah, exciting, <laughs> fun, right. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, right, all of those words. All those um, and they were a little chatty that day. And so I like to meet with the staff the next, you know, the next day. It's not for a post observation meeting, just to talk to them about the school year and everything. I don't know if Mr. Bauer was nervous or he just felt the need to explain to me that they tend to be chatty, but they get the work done. I, and I would say to myself, I wasn't worried about that. They were a little chatty, but at the end of the lesson, they all knew what they had to what they had to learn, what they had to learn, and they did it and took a quiz uh, the next day or a few days later. And I heard they did they did well. So um, I appreciate the fact that Mr. Bauer has the ability, especially at such a young age, um, to entrust student autonomy and and, and 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 that responsibility, especially in middle school, especially at that time of day. Um, I did task Mr. Bauer with getting us out of the developmental league in baseball. And if he doesn't do that before I uh, retire, get fired or, you know, move on in the world, um, I'll be disappointed. But they are having a very successful season this year. And uh, well, he's from Hicksville. He's going to get it done. We don't worry about it. Build a program. Build a program. And so... No, Mr. Power does wonderful things in the classroom. The kids love him. And uh, congratulations to you. He does not go on the test, seem like football. Thank you. <laughs> Next up, Ms. Kelly Shirapo. I think she's going to be in the virtual she's audience there, yes. because unfortunately she's not feeling well this evening. <laughs> uh, <laughs> ahead. I think it's the nerves of trying to be here and us maybe embarrassing her. We would never do that though. Um, she serves as a special ed teacher, you know, at jo in George Washington uh, in the fifth grade class, ICT class with Mr. Popkin. So, you know, they're having a lot of fun in that room. Um, she has been proven to be a dedicated profession professional who works collaboratively with all stakeholders to meet the needs of our students and all the students around her. She can be soft spoken. Um, she's caring. She, en she engages her students through games, small whole group discussions, and hands on experiences. She does a lot of handmade charts and visuals uh, to fill up our learning spaces. She actively advocates for her students, always ensuring that our social, emotional, academic needs are met. She has embraced the habits of mind to routinely integrate strategies and language into her lessons. Um, I can't say enough great things about her. She's come a long way. Another one who's quite young, which just means I'm getting old. Um, and uh, she's being recommended for tenure by Ms. Karras, Ms. Nadi. Congratulations, Kelly. Thank you. 
Feel better, kiddo. Hope we will see Thank you soon. Thank you. Next up, Ms. Sigmund. Who is a school? Yep. Yeah. Uh, one of our fine school counselors navigates the seven, eight, and nine uh, world. So she gets that right smack dab in the middle secondary experience. Um, and it's, it, it is a wonderful time. It can be challenging at times, but it's also very fruitful when we see the progress that they make. In this role, she takes primary responsibility for counseling students through the transition from middle school to high school, prioritizes communication between the school and home. She's highly responsive to teachers' concerns, serves as a liaison between parents and multiple teachers on a student schedule. She ensures that information passes in both directions between the school and home to better support students, social, emotional, and academic needs. <clears throat> she's also a member of our ALT at the district level, which is the academic leadership team. So she's always providing us with insights on how to make things better. Um, and it's been a pleasure getting to know her over these past few years and watch her grow. And um, where she's situated, both in the physical plant and the grade she serves, is going to help us tremendously as we move forward in our new secondary school. She's being recommended for tenure by Mr. Murray, Mr. Pumo, and me. Congratulations, Angela. Last out of the teacher group was certainly not least. It just happened to be enough medical order, although she recently got married and her husband's here with her e this evening. I could say, Lennon, can't do that anymore. <laughs> now she's a hostess. So, um, Ms. Orskett, like Ms. Sigmund, is a school counselor. Jack uh, focuses mainly in high school, and she's been here since August of 2018. Uh, she's the consummate professional who adds value to the high school, the school counseling office, and the students she serves. I have to say, and I think Ms. Lambo wrote this. Um, if she didn't, and Mr. Pumadev I'm still giving credit to Lambo for this one. Um, she did a phenomenal, phenomenal college presentation. Uh, it was virtual, uh, but I have to say, if you have children, not even in our school district, you have your own children, and you live in a different community, come and watch this presentation because any question you want to learn about or need to know about, she had the answers to. I know she's done that in her previous life as a college admissions officer, but uh, is, that right? is that the right title? Um, but she readily shares her knowledge with both students and peers. She has extensive knowledge of graduation requirements, um, which obviously, you know, provides invaluable feedback to students when selecting courses and will be a help for us as we create new pathways for our students in our new secondary school starting on July 1st. Um, definitely one of our leaders and uh, not a bad track coach, I have to say. <laughs> I have to say, I mean, you know, he has some very talented, talented young ladies and men, but uh, without a good coach, uh, you don't create those kind of things. And we were sort of selling her short and the Gary Air Girls short because they're not just ranked in the state, they were ranked nationally this past winter. So, you know, um, what do they call us now? What's the little phrase they use about West Hampton? Tell them. A hidden little gem. <laughs> we are the hidden little gem, ladies and gentlemen, and it's because of people that are here tonight, including Ms. Laura. Congratulations. Next up, Ms. Sigmund. Don't text an update, lady, because you're up. <laughs> 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 I was waiting to do. I don't even know if you are not. I was just say that all the time. <laughs> Next up, with great pleasure, I recommend Ms. Bridget Harris for tennis. I had the opportunity to watch Bridget grow into her role as director of PPS, as we like to call it. Um, she has embodied the phrase uh, "ram fry" in every which way, from her work ethic, programs she has brought to our district. And I remember the day prior to, I think it was before COVID, right? We opened the Pays Lab, right? It's big scissors. And we got the whole rundown of how it works, and the kids are still using it today. And it's just fabulous to watch. When I think we were in this room getting the presentation, and we were trying to figure out how we were going to pay for it. And there it is. Um, it embodies the definition of a learner, models many of the characteristics in what we define as the DGO learning environment that we're creating here in West Hempstead. Um, she was instrumental in creating that partnership with Northwell Health. Um, expanded learning opportunities for our students. 
Um, I have to say, um, and I know there's some debate about this, but for some kids, phenomenal. You know, we've gone to a little bit more of uh, project based learning as an option, not as the only thing, but when you see, uh, and I'm going to use their name, Andrew Wells and Rena Perlman and students of that ilk um, shine and really produce <coughs> quality work, uh, I think we're really on to something. And that's going to be instrumental as we move into this new secondary school and create these pathways. Um, speaking of the students, they get been seen in our office regularly, whether it's for the Friday coffee cart. Even I go and get coffee there. Um, it's not Giorgio's. A uh, piece of candy or to share a success. Without hesitation, I recommend Ms. Karras for tenure, uh, even if she is a Yankee fan. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you, you yeah, should go with Miss Harris to the Yankee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be great. It'll be great. It will be great. And then <laughs> hundred dollars to pocket the Bronx. Hey, 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 Never seen a group of administrators have as much fun as you do. I would add this work is hard as well, but either way, it does speak to my colleagues. So, first one is Mr. No, uh, also known as Mr. Press. Um, uh, really, is his job is the controller of the keys of the money. Um, one, as one member of this three headed district office administration, Joel joined Miss Riley and me uh, four years ago. Eric was also in that mix. As rookies, uh, the three of us walked in together and said, "Yay, we won't, we won't have all the answers, but we're going to figure it out together. And we're going to work until we create great opportunities for students and staff. Although quiet, Mr. Press has an intensity and fire to learn that burns bright. If you ever get him to laugh or embarrass him, he definitely turns red and gets bright. Or yes. some hot sauce. Or some hot sauce, right. I tried it today, he didn't fall for it. <laughs> He does like to be known as Mr. No and what good bit of good business official doesn't. But he is one of the only business people I have ever met that has taken the time to understand the academic side of the education. I think of the uh, other 16 administrators, 15 administrators that uh, work together with Mr. Press. They've all said to him or complimented him at some point about his knowledge and understanding of academics. I was always curious about that, too, because how does a business official allocate funds for things that they're not have to, uh, at least a cursory understanding. I mean, he has a pretty deep understanding of it. Um, so Mrs. Riley and I are always worried that he's going to take over all of our jobs and get rid of us. You know? um, he believes that this allows him to make better decisions when allocating tax dollars in the budget. Joel is a tireless worker and is a great model of RAM result. It's my distinct pleasure to recommend Mr. Joel Press to Penn. <laughs> move on. Or move on. Every once in a while, you have the opportunity to work with and learn from someone whose passion is equal to or surpasses your own. Miss Riley's story, not really Irish, she's Irish to marriage, she is Italian, is the American story. One of opportunity, hard work, and a passion for serving others. Like Joel and Bridget, she's a tireless worker and is willing to do what it takes to get the job done. Under her leadership, she has led our district in aligning its program K to eight, now pre K to eight, so pre K to 12, and has stepped up to begin our new journey that we are calling our last one together before we retire, leave Joel <laughs> to his own vices. Uh, so it's called the secondary school. Um, her calm demeanor and disarming approach allow her to accomplish the goals and deliverables we have outlined in West Hempstead. Do not let the professional appearance fool you if needed. There is a piece of Brooklyn inside of her <laughs> when it is called for. Mm -hmm. I do not worry about her completing the work or her completing it to the highest standard or it being done on time. With respect and enthusiasm, I recommend Christine Riley for today. Thanks, John, madam. <laughs> Thanks. Congratulations to everybody in the room tonight. Um, we have about five more minutes and then we'll, we'll probably be done. So you guys sit tight. <laughs> um, 
At this time, I need a motion to move dockets 1 377 to 1 383. Well, uh, any question? All in favor? Uh, I don't wait for Kurt to say no. no. <laughs> <laughs> motion passes. Um, I need a motion to move dockets 1 384 through 1 392. So, second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. We have no old business. We have no new business. So now, um, as we reach court privilege of the floor, I'll take a moment to speak. On behalf of the board, I want to congratulate all of you who received tenure this evening. Um, we're lucky to have such an amazing group in our RAM fam. So with that also, I'd like to wish happy Teacher Appreciation Week to all of our educators, uh, both here and out in the virtual world and those who could not be with us tonight. I especially want to say thank you to Mr. Press and Ms. Riley for their continued dedication and hard work. As Mr. Riemann mentioned, um, they do have a lot of fun, but they get a lot of work done. And we are very grateful for the three of them um, who managed to get a lot accomplished while you know, yucking it up in central office. <laughs> they, they, they do work tirelessly as we've seen through COVID, as we've seen through everything else that's been going on um, to bring the best education and the most fiscally responsible uh, budget to our community. So we're very happy to have them and um, we hope that retirement's not coming anytime soon. <laughs> Just saying. Um, that being said, there should be a prop in front of you all. I do also want to make one more statement this evening <laughs> to point out that it happens to be behind you. Yeah. It happens to be. Oh, wait. Oh, Pat, I can't reach that. Can you reach that? <laughs> it happens to be our illustrious leader's um, birthday today. So if you have a party hat in front of you, feel free to put it on. I was told I was told I wasn't allowed to do this. So um, I made sure I could. So I'm not gonna sing, but you guys can all sing. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> to say that we do um but he told me i couldn't do that so <laughs> um, i also got scolded because he had work on it first <laughs> <laughs> you can't tell that. Range of okay. I first yelled at me too for this anyway that being said that was board privilege <laughs> floor, and i appreciate everybody um yeah, we heard taking you. part in that so future meeting dates are on the back of the agenda We've now reached the period for district residents, Island Park residents, and or employees of the district to address the board. This period is limited to 20 minutes of non-confidential agenda items if needed. If you have a question from the audience virtually or otherwise, please raise your hand and I will call on you. Okay, I see no questions in the virtual audience. Do we have any questions here in the actual audience? I don't know what to call it. The studio audience? In the live audience? Am I going to embarrass you? Why? Don't you get to embarrass yourself? No, you're not. Oh, Samantha, back. don't you have a question? Don't you? Aren't you taking the class? Are you? <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So for anybody that doesn't know, that's my daughter-in-law in the back of the room. <laughs> The my, president was my, so thorough that you have no question. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, all right, with that, I need a motion to adjourn into executive session for advice of counsel and or discuss person. So moved. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Aye. Any of the mothers Thank out you. there, have a wonderful Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Mother's Day. Day. You're going to tenure again, everybody. Well, <laughs>